All right, guys, in today's video, we are going to hear from some of our previous Whitetail Cribs guests about hunting around the week of Thanksgiving. It's no secret that a lot of the big giant deer killers love hunting this week. And you're gonna hear stories from Dan Infault, Josh Stubbs, and Rodney Gilbert all around bucks killed on or around Thanksgiving. So let's get right into it. This one that's in the middle of those two deer was my first Thanksgiving buck. I've shot three deer over the years on Thanksgiving because that was usually a day I had off from work. I shot him on Thanksgiving and I made a low shot and I trailed him for probably two miles and never found him. And I had to work on the Friday. That following Saturday, I said, I'm gonna go back and find that deer. Well, I found him, but he wasn't dead. And we jumped him up. I got a second shot on him to finish him off and we recovered him, but he was, a, he was a tough one to find. He was in a creek, a dried up creek bottom when we found him the first time. And then when we jumped him up and we got another shot on him. This buck I got on Thanksgiving, this is the second Thanksgiving buck. We were gonna to go to my sister's house on Thanksgiving about, I was gonna leave here about 9.30. I told the wife I was gonna hunt till about 9.30. I'd get out of the tree and then we'd go to my sister's house. Well, about nine o'clock, I started seeing bucks coming by. And uh, a couple smaller bucks had come by the stand and cleared the way. I got out of the stand and as soon as I got to the ground, I heard a buck roar. I mean, it was the loudest buck roar I ever heard. And he was about 30 yards into the timber and I heard him running out to the open. I, I was only about 10 yards from the edge of the timber and I walked to the edge and I seen him out in the open pasture. So I just squatted down and I got an arrow ready and I thought he was just gonna continue north. But he went out in the pasture and he turned and started coming straight towards me. And he got about 20 yards and the, he was downwind of me and he started smelling me. I was already at full draw. When he stopped and started putting his nose up and licking his nose, I, I let him have it. I shot him right, right in the brisket and I, I heart shot him and blood just, just spewed out of him. It shot like a, like a garden hose. And he turned and ran kind of over a hill and I lost him when he went over a hill. So I walked to where I could see over the crest of that hill and there he was piled up at the bottom of that hill. He didn't go about a hundred yards and he was piled up. So I went to the house, told the wife that I, I shot a nice buck and grabbed my deer tag. And I walked down around to the top of the dam and there in the timber, I see a, 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 a buck, a big nice buck walking through the, the timber. And I go, is that my bug? I can't believe he got up and was walking away. So I got another arrow ready and I started walking up. And then I realized I got to where I could see my deer and I looked down, he was still laying there. It was another buck. It was a big mainframe eight pointer. I got a picture of him after the fact I could determine. The morning I, I got this buck, there was four bucks that come through this timber that were all bigger than this one. But I'm grateful I had the opportunity to get this one because if, if I had left five minutes earlier, I'd have never had a chance at all the mother two little bucks held me up long enough to, uh, to get a shot on him. This deer uh, was my 2020 buck and Brittany and I um, were in the same stand together and we watched him come by at 45 yards away. He never stopped. We had some trail cam pics of him, but you could tell uh, that he you know, wasn't living on us, but was definitely passing through. And we, so the night before we saw him, sunset he's going over the ridge and i could tell you know how wide he was so the next day was thanksgiving uh went pheasant hunting that morning and then got in the stand uh that afternoon he came by 10 yards right from behind me i couldn't get him on film but i drew back when he was about 15 20 yards away and he went maybe 30 30 yards away i was late for thanksgiving dinner that night i don't think too many people were, well, no, actually they were, they were upset with me, but that's what you do for deer hunting. This buck over here, um, I don't know if you can see the rack very well in that, but that buck, uh, that's my highest scoring buck. Uh, he scores in the upper 180s gross, right under 180 net. And uh, I've got one shed antler from that buck. I hunted that buck for like three years. And the shed I found right in his bed, I shot him in that bed, the same bed I found the shed in. Um, in his last uh, couple years that I was hunting him, he always bedded when it was a westerly wind, which was most of the time under this willow that was sweeping over in some grass in a low swampy area. And you couldn't get near him because everything else was open. There was no trees or anything. There wasn't a scrape or rub within 100 yards of that bed. And he would be bedded there all the time. And then 
in uh, uh, the end of January, I picked up a shed antler in that, that bed. And the next year, I was watching him bed there on a regular basis, going in and out of there, and some other bucks when he wasn't there. And it was getting to be so regular that I knew he was there, but he would get up and he'd move 100 yards in daylight and it'd be too dark to shoot, and there was no trees around. And it was all canary grass, so it was just driving me crazy. And it was set up with a, um, that west wind. You'd come in down this uh, dirt road. If you stepped off that dirt road, he, he would get buggy. But people would walk past him all the time. So I, one day I went in there, and I, I walked on the road, and I, I see his tracks going across some snow. So I, I walk off the trail like 20 yards looking at his tracks, looking over towards the tree where he beds. Turn around, come back, and I'm trying to contemplate a setup. But ultimately I just thought, no, I'm just going to go back and watch and see what happens and see if he moves far enough. He walks out like he always does and gets to where I walk 20 yards from that trail and just buggers out of there, just runs out of there. If I walk on the dirt road, he's okay. But you get that scent off that dirt road where you don't belong and he'd freak out. So then on Thanksgiving day, I was, I was waiting for a, a wind switch. I knew he wouldn't go cross country, but I was thinking I could sneak in on him on a wind switch. And our gun season is, is uh, Thanksgiving week. And on Thanksgiving day, right in midday, the wind switch from west to east. And I said, I gotta go get this buck. And my whole family was mad because we we're having a big celebration. And I just, I got my shotgun. I'm like, I'll be back, I'll be back, I'll be back. And uh, I went out there and there's a little patch of cattails between the logging road or the dirt road and the bed. And I got on that dirt road in line with that bed with the cattails and I crawled up to those cattails and I bungeed the back, the gun to my back. And there was the water was like this deep in the grass and it was frozen and I had to just kind of break the ice and I went through, I got soaked. And I, I get to those cattails and I never had, you know, the courage to do that. Yeah. You know, and especially with a bowl, but I did it with a shotgun, right? Right. But I get to those cattails and I get the gun off my back and stuff. And you're half thinking he's not gonna be there. You know, and I rise up out of, out of the, this little patch and the thing's 20 yards from me sitting in his bed looking at me like this broadside and I shot it right in the heart. And if it would have been a bow, I would have shot it with a bow, but I never had the courage to do that. Wow. You know, if I would have had the courage, I could have did it with a bow. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, he just jumped out of his bed and fell a few feet from it.